The woman took a deep breath and used the pliers to cut a wound in her arm. As the blood oil seed out, she felt a great deal of pain. At that moment, she was urged to attend the dinner, so she walked out the door. But before she could get downstairs, she was going to return to her room. When she heard the servants calling, she just shouted, Tell them I'm not feeling well at all. It was the 10th year of Diana and Prince Charles' marriage. The wedding of the century, in 1980, one was a global sensation. The bells rang out at nine in the city of London that day. The Royal Cavalry escorted the royal wedding procession. Along the route, many people stood with flowers and cheered. Diana's gorgeous wedding dress was eight meters long. The diamond crown she wore on her head was so heavy that her head ached. But Diana had no idea that her marriage would be nothing but eye candy like this wedding. Only she knew how painful her life had been all these years. Now, ten years later, Diana has two sons with Charles. She lives every day in front of the media cameras and flash bulbs. She has realized that she was only Charles' choice to give birth to his heir. She is haunted by Charles' intimate lover. She had tried to save the marriage, but Diana's naivety and love of fashion were like foreign objects in a royal palace. There was too much of a gap between the prince, who had grown up with an elite education, and her. In the end, the two of them had more and more problems in their marriage. Finally, one day Diana could not stand it anymore. On Christmas Eve of that year, Diana drove to the party alone. By this time, the queen had arrived and finished weighing herself. The British royal family has an odd rule. That is, before and after each meal, each person should be weighed. The butler would judge whether the guests had eaten enough according to the weight change. Diana hated this part. It seemed to her that half of her body weight was in her jewelry. In the past, the butler would leave her alone. But this year he was extra strict. He said that Her Majesty was just sitting on this scale. She was very insistent that everyone join the session. In fact, Diana is in such a poor state of mind that she tends to overeat. She wants to throw up when she hears her son say sandwich. Diana's only friend is the customer. The dressmaker brings her a bright evening gown. Diana says the dress is inappropriate. The black color should match her mood at the moment. But the dressmaker said no one was dead here so there was no need to wear black. Diana was persuaded by the dressmaker to choose the first gown. She complained to the dressmaker about the new housekeeper and how the place made her uncomfortable. She was late for the dinner because of these complaints. The queen and her husband ignored her. Only the housekeeper stood at the end of the table staring at her intently. Diana clutched the pearl necklace around her neck. Feeling more depressed than ever, she pulled the pearl necklace off her neck with tears in her eyes. The pearls fell into the fine meal, and she scooped one into her mouth with a spoon and chewed it carefully and swallowed it. <sighs> Diana threw up on the toilet after a while, yet the necklace was still intact around her neck. It turns out she was just imagining things, but Diana thought the pearl necklace was a symbol of shame because Prince Charles had given the same necklace to his lover. Diana couldn't even give the necklace to anyone else. She stayed in such a big palace like a stranger. She threw up all the food she ate at night. Late at night, Diana sneaked into the kitchen to look for food. But even at this time, she had to live under the watchful eye of others. The housekeeper found out she was stealing food and told her to behave and be a good princess. At least she had to remember to draw the curtains when she changed her clothes. Who knows how many reporters were waiting to photograph her. Now Diana's emotions exploded. She was like a bug on a plate waiting to have its wings and legs ripped off by the reporters. And then the reporters had to record her painful reaction. She had lived under the media scrutiny since forever. She had to look her best every minute of every day. This poor Diana. The next day, she found out that the costume designer had been replaced. She didn't even know the new costume designer. But even though she was unhappy, she spoke gently as she dismissed the new servant. She was just more used to the care of the previous one because of this delay. She was the last one to arrive at the photo shoot. Her husband remained indifferent to her. He also asked Diana not to spit the cooked hard-earned breakfast into the toilet when the church bells rang. In that church, people were dressed in plain clothes, but Diana was the only one wearing a red dress. As she walked out of the church, reporters swarmed around her. As the most talked about princess, Diana's every word and action was exaggerated by the media for the whole country to talk about. Prince Charles approached Diana about this and told her about the mistakes she was making these days. He said that there must be to Diana's, the real you and the one in the photo taken by the press. Diana was so angry that she slapped the table. She never thought her marriage would look like this before she married someone. Recently, she found a book that tells the story of Anne Boleyn and was the woman who was beheaded by Henry VIII in the 16th century for being unfaithful to her husband. But it was actually Henry VIII who slandered her because he wanted a new wife. Coincidentally, Anne and Spencer were distant relatives. Diana fears that she will be the next M. Late at night she wanders the palace. The dressmaker is gone, and she has no one to talk to. The others would only tell her not to tell everything. The butler rushed Diana to get dressed for the dinner. 
It was his duty to deliver the queen's message. Diana returned to her room to find the curtains sewn shut. The maid brought her a gorgeous outfit, but Diana was bored with it. How luxurious was life in the royal family? She has an endless list of clothes to choose from every day. This is a dress for a dinner party. This one is for going out. This one is for breakfast. Many boxes of fancy ingredients are brought to her every day. But to ensure the freshness of the food, they never kept the ingredients until the next day. Diana's life in the palace was not practical. She didn't even have the freedom to decorate her room. It was like a cage that kept her inside. She found a pair of pliers and used them to rip open the curtains that had been sewn up. She took a deep breath at that moment to feel the breath of freedom. She used the pliers to make a wound on her arm. Although there were beads of blood ouncing out, she felt very happy. At that moment, the servant urged her to go to the dinner. Diana wiped the blood off her arm with a paper towel, threw up on the toilet, and walked out the door. But she didn't make it downstairs before she turned back to her room. She had an emotional breakdown and told them, I wasn't feeling well at all. Diana couldn't take it anymore. Behind her, there seemed to be an spirit urging her to get out of the palace. Diana walked out of the palace, cut the wire around the perimeter of the courtyard with a pair of pliers and returned to her original home. Diana groped in the darkness and climbed upstairs. She walked through the corridors, through the rooms. In a trance, she seemed to see herself as a young girl, seeing herself running hard all those years. She grew bigger and bigger, but she became more and more unhappy. Diana sat her day on the stairs and cried. Then she stood up in a trance and tried to jump down the stairs. Diana. But Diana suddenly seemed to see her in her wedding dress again. She also saw her happy with her sons. So she ripped the pearl necklace from her neck. It was like she was free from her bondage and felt so happy. The next day, the original dressmaker returned to her. Because Prince Charles and the others felt that Diana was mentally ill, they needed to find someone to talk to. Diana said she couldn't stand this depressing life. She likes simple and ordinary things. She likes real things, like the Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserables, and even fast food. She was worried about her children before she left. She ran to Charles and her sons who were hunting. Diana asked her sons to come home with her. Charles reluctantly let her take his two sons. Diana drives the boys away from the hunting grounds. Pop music was playing in the car and the three of them bobbed their heads and swayed. They drove up to a fast food restaurant to buy food. When the waitress asked Diana what her name was, Diana said her name was Spencer. At this moment, she was finally being herself. The three of them listened to pop music and ate fast food. The wind in their faces was so gentle and comfortable. In December 1992, Princess Diana and Prince Charles officially separated. In 1996, they divorced and Diana regained her freedom. Sadly, she was killed in a car accident in 1997. For many years, she was known as People's Princess. Diana had the courage to stand up for people living with AIDS and urge people to help each other. She will always be remembered as the fresh breeze that blew into the old castle.